All right, guys, we're back with just a quick review of a couple of headlamps that you might want to take a look at for your next moto camping adventure. So there's a couple of things that you want to keep in mind when you're looking for a headlamp specifically for motorcycle travel. Obviously, the biggest one is going to be the size of it. Um, you can certainly buy those uh, full headband that have the battery pack on the back and they put out 10 million lumens and it's going to require an entire pannier to carry the thing. Um, I prefer to have my stuff packed down small and be functional. I also prefer to have my headlamp um, be able to use either a headband or clip on to a hat. I wear a hat pretty much any time I'm off the bike on a trip and to be able to just clip it to my hat means I don't have to carry around the headband and have another thing to keep track of. You're definitely going to want something that's rechargeable. The last thing you want to have to do is juggle batteries while you're on the road. Uh, it's just one less thing to worry about. And then the next thing to keep in mind is the style of LED that the headlamp uses. We'll just use this for an example. I prefer this style of LED where it's this whole panel instead of just the single LED element there in the center. Um, this is called a Cobb LED. This whole panel puts out light instead of just a single really bright point from one spot. And the advantage that that gives you is you don't have a really intense beam of light just focused on one place reflecting back at you. You have a flood lamp versus a spot lamp. Um, and the biggest thing about that is the people that you're with on your moto camping trip will really appreciate not being blinded by the light of a thousand suns every time you look their direction. These give off a nice dispersed light that just kind of lightly covers an area instead of just blasting the light. Um, and then so when your friends look in your direction, they see light coming from your general area instead of laser beams directly into their soul. So as you shop for a light, uh, keep in mind that brighter is not necessarily better. And just real quick, before we get into these two specific lights, I just wanted to remind you guys, uh, we've got a lot of things going on on the channel, especially coming this summer. Um, you're going to want to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of that. Let's get into it. All right, so I did quite a bit of research um, before I bought my first headlamp, and that was the Streamlight Bandit. I've had one of these for... About six years now and I lost it and I've been really bummed out I cannot find it anywhere and so I went to buy another one and this thing popped up and I thought it would be a great chance to compare the two so as I said the first one's the Streamlight Bandit and the other one is the Nebo Micro 500 Plus and there is just a regular Micro but instead of the Cobb LEDs on each side, it just has a red and or a green small LED. And that one wouldn't be so great for these purposes. So the 500 plus is the one we're talking about specifically. I initially fell in love with the Bandit uh, because first thing, it's rechargeable, comes with a little uh, USB to micro USB charge cable um, and then it comes with a headband a clip to clip it onto your hat and then obviously the light itself on the back here lithium polymer battery it's got three modes there's a high of 180 lumens and it claims it'll run for two hours on low, you get 35 lumens. It claims it'll run for nine and a half hours. Um, and then it has a, a flash. It's not like a strobe light, but it just kind of flashes a constant. I think it's like every half second or something. 
I don't know what you would use that for, but it does that. And then it claims it's IPX4 water resistant. And as I said, I fell in love with this light. I really liked it. I got comments all the time uh, while camping about how nice it was to not be blinded by my headlamp when people would walk in front of me or when we were talking. And so I'm curious to see if this lamp that claims to be a little bit brighter is going to be too bright. Uh, the next one, obviously the Nebo Micro 500 Plus. Um, it packs down similar size to the Bandit. Well, we'll get a little bit closer view once we open them. Um, packs down similar size. Uh, the one thing that I really like is that it's a USB-C charge port. Um, because honestly, micro USB is getting pretty outdated nowadays. Um, this comes with just the headband. The, the hat clip is just kind of part of the light. Then this has two lights on it. Uh, the flood, which is the cob LEDs on either side. And then the spotlight, obviously the one here in the center. <clears throat> the spotlight, the big one in the center, claims uh, 500 lumens when it's on turbo mode. And we'll talk about how you activate that. On high, you get 200 lumens. Medium, you get 100. And it's claiming much shorter run times than the Bandit, which is one of the things that might be a concern. Um, on turbo, you get 30 seconds. That doesn't mean the battery dies in 30 seconds. It, uh, it just means that it'll time out of that turbo mode after 30 seconds so that the light doesn't overheat. Uh, high, you'll get one hour battery, medium, two hours, low, three hours. And then the cob is, again, the floodlights on either side. Um, that has a high of 200 lumens, so a little bit brighter than this claimed 180 on the Bandit. That'll give you 25 minutes of runtime. Low will give you 50 lumens at one hour of runtime. And then this also does a red, which is kind of nice for uh, if you don't want to mess up your night vision, but you need a little bit of extra light, the cob will turn red and give you just enough light to be able to see in the dark without just totally uh, constricting your pupils. Um, so on red, you get 25 lumens, claims you'll get 35 minutes out of that. So obviously the biggest difference here is runtime. The Bandit, I never had issues with it going dead while I was using it. I would camp a whole weekend on one charge, not really have to worry about it. If this has to be charged every day, that could be a problem. All right, so let's get these guys opened up here. Oh, come on. Don't be like that. We've got the light. And this one does not give you an adjustable angle when it's on the headband. If you put it directly on the headband through these straps here. If you use the hat clip, there's also slots for the headband to go through and then it gives you that tilting angle. So if you want the lowest profile option possible, you're gonna go with this and the headband threaded into these straps, which I'll do off camera here in a second. Um, I always carried it in this configuration. It just clips on to that. Then you've got an angle and it clips onto your hat. Pretty self-explanatory. And the last thing is your micro USB charge cable. It's a very short cable, which um, I found kind of useful because I just kept the cable in my tank bag. I only had to charge it a couple of times, but uh, the charge port is on the bottom behind this little rubber cover. Um, definitely not waterproof, um, but it will keep the dust and, and junk out of there and, and rain, but you don't want to drop it in the pool for sure. Plug it in there, give it a charge. 
Um, before we do any testing, I'm going to make sure these are both charged all the way, but for right now, for demonstration, your button here is on the top. You've got high, oh, whoops, low, and then, then high, and off. Uh, nothing too fancy with this, just low, high, off, low, high, and back off. Or if you, well, it's off, you hold the power button, it starts flashing after, you know, I don't know, a few seconds, maybe five seconds, and then you can just turn it off. I don't know what you would use that feature for, but it does that. And the next one, the one I'm excited about, hopefully it's good. Um, oh, this one does come with a charging cable, just couldn't see it. And then it comes with a headband. The headband on this is a, a little bit bulkier than the Bandit. You can tell it's a little bit wider. The strap feels a little thicker, uh, a little less flexible. This one is definitely more packable. Okay, so this one, uh, same situation. You got the light, you've got your charge cable, and you've got your headband. Um, right off the bat, I can say the, um, the micro is a smaller form factor overall than the bandit a um, little bit narrower and similar width i would say this is maybe a little bit thicker this direction because of that metal clip for your hat um, this one is all one piece You've got your swivel, hinge, the slots for the headband, and the clip, the hat clip, are all one piece. Okay, so like I said, um, we're going to get both of these charged all the way, um, and then we're going to run them through a little bit of performance test. We're going to see uh, runtime on both of them, and then we're going to do a brightness test. I think... Uh, we're going to have a little bit of an advantage with this one as far as brightness, but I have a feeling that the Bandit is still going to be the better choice because of its claimed runtime. We'll see how accurate that is. Um, so we will get charged up and I will run uh, the runtime test off camera and just tell you the results and we'll be back in a minute with the brightness test. All right, here we are for a brightness test on each of the lights. Uh, keep in mind that as the shop lights go off and then the headlamp comes on, the camera is gonna do a little bit of exposure adjusting. So this is definitely not the most scientific test, um, but it should give you a, a bit of an idea of what the brightness of these are like. Uh, first up is the Streamlight Bandit. So, Alexa, turn off the lights. And we'll start out in low. So, as best I can tell on camera, you cannot see very well. I can see enough to be able to maneuver just fine in the dark. It's actually quite bright. <laughs> And then we'll go back over here and change to high. Okay, that's high. And again, I don't think the camera is doing a very good job at representing how bright this actually is. Um, on high, this light is more than bright enough to function around a campsite. Uh, right now we're about four feet away from the table and it's totally dark in here other than the headlamp. The camera is just not picking up everything. 
So we'll get resituated and we'll switch over to the other light. All right, now we're reset in the same spot with the Nebo Micro 500 Plus. Um, this has a few different light settings. We'll go through all of them so you can see a comparison. And here we go. Alexa, turn off the lights. So this has two buttons. Um, the one on the right is for the Cobb LEDs. So we'll start there. And this one turns on high first. So I'll have to cycle through. Okay, that's high. That's medium. Oh, nope, that was just high and low. So high, that's low. Um, already, <laughs> I could tell this light, I know you can't really see it on camera. Here's that same TW200 we looked at a second ago. Um, on low, this is putting out more light than the stream light did on high. So that could be good or it could be a problem. We'll see a, uh, a comparison of the two walking towards the camera here in a second. Um, so this is on low still. And we'll back up to the same position and switch to high. There's off and high. Oh, there we go. High. Um, this is considerably brighter than the stream light. Like, I would think this might be on the verge of being too bright if you were around other people. But there is the advantage of not being that direct laser beam of light as if it were the, the spotlight. Um, as you can see right now, we're... Uh, that's almost 10 feet from my toolbox there. I can see it just fine in person. I can see the whole building just fine in person. On camera, it looks like you can see the toolbox and the table pretty well. Um, let's go back over to our starting point and we'll try out the red setting. So to do that, you find your button for the cob LEDs and you hold it and it turns red. Wow, that's creepy. <laughs> I doubt you'll be able to see. Oh no, you can kind of see it on camera. So this would be for, you wake up in the middle of the night, you really got to go pee. Uh, you don't want to be blind and you also don't want to wake up everybody else at camp. Uh, gives you just enough light to see what you're doing without blinding you or waking up your buddies. So back to start. Well, now we're going to turn off the cob and turn on the spotlight. Um, it could be useful to have this feature on a headlamp. Uh, dang, that's bright. Holy cow. And that is not the turbo mode. That is, oops, low. Nope. So when you first hit the button, it turns on at high. And as you can see, that is a powerful beam, but it's very focused. Um, you're going to get a lot of people. If you're looking at other people talking, they're not going to be happy about this. Uh, so that's high. That's medium. And that's low. This would be functional as a headlamp around other people, but it is still quite focused. Uh, not super bright though. And then I think we've still got the turbo mode. Okay, so we're back on high. And then if I hold this button, it'll switch to turbo. Whew, that is bright. Um, you know, if you wanted to have a headlamp that kind of served dual function where you can you can ha use it around camp, but then also spot the space station. <laughs> um, this, this is your light, your dual purpose light. All right, so let's resituate the camera and we'll do 
some shots with the lights pointing directly at the camera so you can see a difference in intensity from the viewpoint of somebody looking at your headlamp. Alexa, turn on the lights. All right, here we are back in the dark and we are, I think maybe you can barely see me, we're about uh, 20 feet back from the camera right now and I've got these lights ready to point right at you. All right, first one here is the Streamlight Bandit and it should come on to low first, I believe. I don't know, we'll figure it out. So that is, I believe, low. Okay, so that's low with the Streamlight Bandit. And I think you can probably tell it's not super oppressive <laughs> for whoever is looking at me, especially if you if you tilt it so that it's angled down a little bit, it's not gonna point directly at the other person. Um, I can see everything right here down in front of me. It's not blinding me. If I turn it that way, it, it blinds me. Really nice to work with, and that's on low. On high, you can see it does get pretty bright. You've got quite a bit of lens flare on the camera, especially if I point it right at you. That's pretty bright, so imagine your buddy is wearing this headlight and that's shining right in your face. Uh, pointed down a little bit, you can see my face, I can see what's going on right in front of me, and I can see way over there just fine. I'm not throwing out 10,000 lumens lighting up the entire campground, I'm just lighting up the stuff that I, that's within arm's reach and a little bit beyond when it's on high. Um, and that is everything that this light does. So we'll switch to the other one. Okay, so now the next one here is the Nebo Micro 500 Plus. And it's, we're gonna do the cob first. It'll take me a second to figure out which setting it's on. Uh, apparently it's on red first. So I guess we'll start here. Um, this is awesome. Um, I would totally use this feature it gives me plenty of light. You can see me. That's pointed directly at the camera. Um, you do get a bit of lens flare, but it's not, it's not that powerful white light right in your face. Totally workable. I can see, I mean, looking around, I can see everything within arm's reach of where I'm standing just fine. Um, it is kind of weird how everything has the red tint, but if you're trying to save your night vision, that's pretty nice. Uh, and then we'll back up over here and switch it to, uh, we'll go low, I think. There we go. Okay, so what's that? Off. Okay, this is low on the cob and it's quite a bit brighter than the stream light, the, uh, the bandit. This is comparable to what the bandit did on high and this is low. Um, plenty of light, totally workable like this. I, I wouldn't even need to use high. Let's see what that looks like though. Okay, off, low, high. This is way brighter than the stream light. Um, I don't know if you can tell the difference on camera. I can, this is too bright. <laughs> there would, there's no reason to have your just walking around camp light this bright. As you can see, when it's pointed right at the camera, that sucks. You, <laughs> your friends would not want to stand around and talk to you with this thing on your head. Uh, when it's pointed down a little bit, it's a little more manageable. That's pretty bright in my face. But anyway, if for a minute you needed a whole bunch of light, this is fine. But uh, you would not really ever need this much light out of these weird floodlights. Um, now we're going to switch off the cob 
and we're going to go to the spotlight. Um, oh my gosh, that's pointed right at the camera. Um, I'm not sure what setting that is. Okay, so it must have started out on high. So this is low. Um, this You would not use a light like this to talk with other people around or to maneuver around camp. This would be, what the hell was that in the trees over there? And you turn your spotlight on. Um, honestly, I don't think that's a feature that you really need in a headlamp. Imagine talking to somebody with this shining in your face. Um, we'll back up a little bit and we'll go to medium. There's, I don't, I don't know what you would use this for as a headlamp. You could hold it in your hand and just walk around with it for a flashlight, I guess. So it could serve dual purpose like that. Um, and then we've got turbo. Uh, <laughs> don't point this at anybody that would, so let's go back over to the table and we'll talk about all of our results. Alexa, turn on the lights. Okay. So we're back over at the table and we just saw the results of the, um, the brightness of each of these lights. And now let's talk about the run times that I ran this off camera. Like I said, both lights fully charged, uh, ran them on low, each of them on low until they died and then recharged them and ran them on high again until they died. And we ended up with the stream light running a uh, pretty short of its claimed runtime, but also considerably better than the Nebo. Um, on low, the stream light only ran for five hours and 26 minutes where it claimed nine and a half. And then on high, the stream light ran for one hour and 29 minutes where it claimed two hours. So a little bit closer to its claimed runtime on high, but still fell quite a bit short. And then for the Nebo, it ran on low for an hour and 10 minutes of its claimed one hour. So a little bit over, not too crazy. Um, and then on high, it ran for 33 minutes, which again was a little bit over its claim of 25 minutes. And on the red setting, it ran for 36 minutes and the claim was 35. So that one was a little bit over on each of its claims uh, compared to what it actually ran. So that's better, but when you look at it in a comparison, uh, it, it fell way short of the bandit. Um, are those numbers that far off to really make a difference? I'm not convinced that they are. Honestly, these are both rechargeable. Um, the, the Nebo was so bright on low that it was comparable to this on high. And on low, like I said, we got an hour and 10 minutes out of it. Um, I don't stand around with my headlamp on for an hour and 10 minutes every night. So really, you could probably use this and plug it in every night or every other night and do just fine. Um, this one, you could go all weekend, really. <laughs> So that's just kind of going to be up to you whether you want the longer run time or you want the little bit more brightness plus you've got some other features in the nebo um, let's go over a few of the uh, the things i like about each of these and then we'll finish this up um, the stream light um, the first thing i like about it is that i know this light i've had one of these for about six years like i said i lost it I was bummed out, <laughs> so bummed out that I went and bought another one. So I like this light. I know it works. I have tested it myself. It is a good light. It's proven itself. Um, the micro, 
I haven't actually used it yet, so I can't say long term wise which of uh, whether or not this one is any good. The uh, the other thing that I like about the Streamlight is that it's simple. It's it's got high and low, and a hat clip, and kind you know not not a lot of confusion. You just push the button. You either get high or you get low, and that's it. And then obviously the longer runtime is nice on this. Um, the Nebo, yes, it is more complicated, but I think for some people that could be a plus because this runs double duty. Well, I mean, almost triple duty if you consider it's a headband or it's a hat clip. And then with this spotlight on it, you can hold it in your hand and use it like a regular flashlight. And it's, if you want to have a flashlight with you, that's just one less thing to have to carry around. Um, I really like the red light function. The Streamlight does not have that. And um, it packs, it's a little bit smaller. I know it's it's hard to tell on camera, especially trying to get you a good angle to see it. But this is a bit smaller than the Streamlight. And on a motorcycle, that makes, that makes a big difference. And the last thing that I like um, is pretty inconsequential, but... Between the two headbands, I very much prefer this headband. It is a little bit bulkier, not by much, especially when you smush it all down. Um, but this one feels a lot nicer and it's way easier to adjust than the Streamlight. Um, once you do it right. Um, the Streamlight was kind of finicky to get it to adjust, but also, like I said, I never, I never used it. I just clip it onto my hat. So if you're in it for the headband, I would go with the Nebo. All right, and so the big question is, which one of these do I like? Which one is gonna go in my tank bag? Uh, like I said, I know this light, I like this light. I was intrigued by this one enough to buy it when I was already shopping for the one I knew I was gonna buy. Um, I haven't mentioned this yet, but these are, this, these are the same price. These come out to about $25 on Amazon for either one of them. For the money, I think this is a better value. Um, it's got way more features on it. It's a little bit smaller. Um, feels a little bit sturdier to me. It's got, you know, this aluminum around the outside edge here. The spotlight is trimmed in aluminum to, you know, help prevent from scratches and stuff. This is just plastic. It doesn't really matter. It's just a headlamp. But I do think this is a little bit better value based on initial impressions um, for my money I would recommend either of these lights right now as far as which one's gonna go in my tank bag it's gonna be this one I'm gonna try this light out um, and maybe we'll do a little bit of a long-term review down the road I think this one's the winner in my book uh, just a, a little bit better value and you've got more features and it runs dual purpose it's a, a headlamp and a flashlight and anything you can do to carry one less thing on your bike is going to be a big help so uh that's pretty much it for the comparison of these two lights i uh, hope you found it useful um, i'll throw links to both of these down in the description if you feel like you want to grab either one of these and um like I said earlier, uh, don't forget to subscribe. There's a lot of things coming coming down the line this summer. We've got the uh, Budget Moto Adventures. That's still going on. Don't worry. I know there's a, a couple of you that have watched those videos. Um, there are more episodes coming. It's just been real cold, and it's hard to work in the garage when it's that cold. So uh, anyway, we will uh, see you on the next one, and ride safe.